All right, traders, this is going to be the first trading plan of the new year 2023. I strongly believe tomorrow is going to be a green day. I've already identified patterns and strategies that are lining up for the SPY. I'm going to be giving you the exact trade plan to identify whether the bulls or bears are going to be in control of the price action for tomorrow. The key make it or break it levels, where to be executing the trades, where to set your max risk, and where to set your profit targets. We're going to be breaking down everything within this video. This is going to show you exactly how to trade the best setups at the best prices and how to profit within the stock market, scalping and trading heading into tomorrow. For those who are wondering, Trader Society has officially reopened up. For more information, it is going to be the first link down below in the description. With that being said, for those of you who are in Trader Society, I will see you live tomorrow in the morning. Let's get straight into the analysis. So in terms of future hours trading sessions, you can see right here in terms of the ES, it ended up you know, opening up with this massive gap up to 3,900, and then it sold off all the way back down under the previous closing price. Now, this is what I want you to understand about the key make it or break it levels for SPY heading into tomorrow. So what has the SPY been doing for the past you know, three, four days now? It's been sitting in an overall channel. For the past week, the SPY has been sitting in a channel. This channel was mainly from starting December 22nd. And here's what I want you to understand in terms of how you can take advantage and profit from this channel. And what I always want you to understand as well is in terms of entries with put options and short selling, you wanna focus on major resistance, the higher levels. If you're seeing bearish reactions, resistance, um, you know, bearish confirmations. And then in terms of the lower level, you're going to want to focus on call uh, call options, you know, going long if you see bullish reactions. So let's get straight into it. The main channel on the SPY has been this 383.44 roof. And then in terms of your support, we had a gap to fill below at 374. That still has not filled yet. And we also have a gap to fill below at 376.66, right? So that's your overall floor. That's your overall micro support zone. And your overall micro resistance zone is going to be this 383.44 to 382.44. Now let's get straight into the analysis. As you can see, the bulls have been struggling at this resistance. The bulls have been struggling at this resistance towards 383. Um, there's a gap to fill above at 386.23. The SPY tried to turn it into a floor. You can see they, the bulls try to turn it into a floor and they try to break out. They tried to have the gap break out and fill the gap, but they failed to do so. Then the SPY ended up gapping down and then heading into Friday's close, we saw a very nice micro pump towards that key maker break gap breakdown support level. Meaning if this support level holds, the SPY is going to explode back up to start to fill the gap. If this support level cracks at 379 and reacts as a resistance, then the SPY is going to start to get crushed and fill the gap below at 376.66, which is where you can see a potential micro gap close reversal, right? So if you looked at the 30 minute candles, if you looked at the overall confirmations, it was forming a floor, it was forming bottom wicks, it was forming support, it was not forming resistance at this key support level. Therefore, the SPY exploded up in attempts to fill the gap. This is what I want you to understand now heading into tomorrow. So we are approaching a gap fill zone, a gap close potential reversal where the SPY fills this gap and can potentially have a reversal, right? We've seen major resistance, plenty of fake outs, and also now two gaps to fill below, one at 376.66 and one at 374. So here's what I want you to understand. This is going to be your zone. If you see this zone react as a resistance level, it's going to be bearish and you're going to want to look into put options at at the money strikes so the top of the zone is going to be 383.44 your current best level if you see the spy explode up to 383.44 and then it goes green to red you see it start to go red you see it start to react as a resistance you see it crack under 382.44 forming strong resistance forming bearish confirmations forming that roof then you're going to want to scalp some puts and look to ride this down if the SPY cannot turn 382.44 into support, and if the SPY goes green to red heading into um, you know Tuesday morning, and we're seeing strong bearish confirmations, then it's going to try its best to crack 379. Once you see that 379 is a roof, that is when you're going to start to see this gap fill below at 376.66. If you're seeing bullish confirmations, you can try to buy the dip at 376.66. But what I would recommend if you're interested in buying a dip is to wait for the best price possible, which would be at 374.13. 
But if you see bullish confirmations, you can try here at 376.66 with a tight stop. Um, just remember the best price is 374.13 for calls, right? And then your put options, your resistance, look for the gap close reversal, look for the green to red move. If you see it go under 382.43, or if you see it showing bearish confirmations at 383.44, all reasons to short. Now, in terms of true strength for bulls, what they would need to do, and they would need to do it quickly, is they need to stay green, they need to hold above 382.43, they need to break above 383.44, and they need to turn 383.44 into a floor. If they can turn 383.44 into a floor, like they were doing again here, which was on you know Thursday, if they can do that again and start to turn it into a floor, we should see an attempt of a very strong breakout to start to fill the gap. And if that's what were to happen, then 386.23 would be your next best level to try put options to short the SPY at 386.23 if it reacts bullish and forms support at this level. I'm not too interested in trying to buy the breakout and trying to buy the top. Yes, you can use bullish confirmations or whatever it is that you use to determine if it's gonna be a strong breakout or not. But in terms of the overall market, in terms of my style of trading, what I like doing is when I'm buying calls, when I'm buying, I like to buy at the dip. And there's a right way to do it, and there's a wrong way to do it, and there's strategies and stuff like that, right? It's not as simple as just looking at support level and then buying the dip, right? But I prefer to buy the dip. I do not prefer to buy breakouts. I do not prefer to buy resistance. I do not like studying a um, channel, you know, support resistance and saying, okay, Let's try to buy the top of the channel. It's faked out several times, huge downside potential. Let's try to buy the top and predict that it's gonna be a breakout. I don't like predicting things, right? I like doing the inverse. Whereas, okay, it topped out at this channel 30 times in a row. Let's shoot for 31 times, right? And then I'll go for the resistance level and I'll short and I'll play the puts, right? And then in, in terms of the calls, I'm looking at the key support. I'm looking at 374 for calls. I'm looking at 376.66. And I mainly like doing this with initial reactions, meaning like the first time it kind of tests the level overall. The first time it fills the gap at 376. Um, 66. The first time it fills the gap at 376.13. The first time it fills the gap at 383.44. The first time it fills the gap at 386. I don't like continuing to replay it and replay it and replay it. The first time the initial reaction tends to be the best trading opportunity, the easiest move for you know these reversals of these channels, right? So that's kind of my style in a sense. And that's what I'm going to be focused on heading into 2023. Um, in terms of my puts, just doing exactly what I've been doing um, you know, in all the bear market of last year, just at the key resistance levels, at the gap flow levels with my bearish confirmations, along with all the strategies and patterns that I'm using. And then in terms for calls, um, I'm not a huge fan of, you know, buying in general, buying the dip or anything like that. But if I do buy calls, it's definitely going to be focused on gap fill levels, on oversold levels and on dips, not on breakouts, right? So it's just understanding your style of trading. And just understanding, you know, if you don't want to buy the breakout and if war to look bullish, then just sit on the sidelines and wait for the next opportunity for puts, right? So if it looks bullish up here, I don't want to buy it. I would just much rather wait for it to go higher and play puts at a higher price at 386.23, right? You don't want to buy puts into bullish confirmations if it's breaking out. So um, yeah, that's my overall thoughts. That's my overall analysis. So 383.44 to 382.44 is make or breaks. If the bulls cannot turn into a floor, turn into support. And if it goes green to red under 382.44, we drop to 381. If 381 snaps, then we go to 379. If 379 snaps, then we go to 376.61. If one of those levels that I just mentioned reacts as a support level, then it goes to the next level above. If one of those levels that I mentioned reacts as a resistance level, then it goes to the next level below, right? And then in terms of, you know, 3 to 344 make or break, if that breaks out, reacts to support, it's going to try to break above this 384.30 resistance to fill the gap at 386.23 and 386.23 would be the best price. So, Will, what's the best levels to be trading at? So, if the SPY breaks out and turns 383.44 into a floor, the next best level to be trading at would be this 386.23. If the SPY um, reacts as a resistance level at 383.44, then it's going to start to try to have a reversal and it's going to sell off to about this 381.50 to 382 zone. So another key level of interest that I'm interested in trading at is towards the top of this micro channel at this 380.44. Now, this 381.50 to like 382 level is make or break. If SPY goes green to red and cracks under 381.50, it's going to get ugly. It's going to try to crack 379. Once 379 turns into a roof and not reacting as a floor like it did here, then it's going to sell off to fill the gap below. So what are some other levels that I'm interested in making a trade at? So the best one for put, 
puts, 386 to 383.44. I'm also interested in seeing how we react at the previous closing price of Friday, which is going to be 382.44. So I'm going to set my alert at or below that. Um, another key make or break level is um, $379. Now understand, this is a support level, right? And we don't wanna, we don't want to be buying put options at a support level. So um, just understand that, right? But once it does crack and react bearish and react as a resistance, we will see a nice gap fill play to 376.66. In terms of call options, 376.66 would be you know, a key level to keep an eye on here for a gap close reversal initial reaction pump. And then a best level for interested in calls would be this gap to fill right here, which I already have an alert set at 374.13, right? So my main overall levels of interest in trading are 386 to 383.44 to 382.44 zone. Um, this zone, this resistance, those are the main levels. And then in terms of calls, I have the lower zones, which is 376.80 and 374.13, right? And then in terms of price action that aren't the best price is kind of in the middle. What you need to understand is if 381.50 cracks, it's going to get ugly and it will most likely crack 379 to fill the gap. If 381.50 can crack and react as a resistance, we will most likely see a hard sell off to fill the gap towards 376, right? This 381.50 is a true make or break level in a sense, along with this 382.43. So just remember and just understand if this opens up green and you see it breaking above 383.44, it's holding above. It's forming support. It hits 384, right? It's not going green to red. Then you're you're gonna want to avoid puts in that situation. Wait till 386 to see how it reacts till the gap fills, right? Um, if it reacts bullish up there at 386, then I would wait till 389.63. 389.63 is another best level for puts, right? Um, and just understand if it goes green to red, if it's reacting bearish at 383.44, we go under 382.44. It's most likely going to be an extremely bearish day and really try to fill the gap. Basically, in terms of like, well, Will, what would need to be the key level for this to be absolute over for the short term for SPY to sell off very, very hard? they would need to go under 381.50 and turn that into a resistance level. Obviously, if it looks bearish before then, I'm going to be buying puts towards like 383.44 to 382.44. If it's looking bearish, green to red, I'll buy puts before um, to get a better entry, but I'm going to be scaling out. I'm not going to, you know what I mean? I'm not going to be holding for the gap to fill. I'll be scaling out. So key levels to be scaling out, 381.50, 379, and um, 376.66. Those would be your three key levels to scale out. I'll typically look to scale out the vast majority at the first level and then leave a small size to ride for the second level, right? But in terms of your profit targets, 38150, 379, 37666. So that's my overall analysis. Um, like I said, if it reacts bullish at the breakout, I'm most likely just going to sit on sidelines and just wait for the higher gaps to fill for a put opportunity because I like trading in an overbought and oversold overreaction type of style. You got to wait to trade the best setups at the best prices. You can't be forcing trades. I don't like, you know, saying that spy is going to try to break out. Let me predict a breakout. I mean, look, it, it did break out, but it was such a small move. You see that? Like, I don't want to do that. I want to get in at the best prices, the best levels to be buying the dip and the best levels to be shorting the rip, right? That's what my focus is on in terms of scalping if you do it that way your entry is going to be a lot better you won't be predicting breakouts or breakdowns right if you try to get if you try to buy puts at 379 you're predicting that support's going to crack there's not even a bearish confirmation but you're still predicting it in a sense because um it hasn't been a proven roof it hasn't really cracked support you're predicting that a support level is going to crack and when that happens you get squeezed you get squeezed huge downside potential for your puts, very little upside potential for your puts, right? You don't want to be in situations like that. That's why you got to be getting in towards the key resistance levels with the strategies and then the inverse for the call options. So that's one tip that I can give you heading into 2023, along with everything else that I've been teaching along this channel and within Trader Society. That's going to be the game plan, guys. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this and learned a lot. Tomorrow's expected to be a very nice green day. I'm already seeing super bearish patterns lining up with the SPY. But of course, we got to wait till market open. But just look at this chart on ES, man. It has, a, it has a breakout right here, has a gap up, has a breakout right here, has a gap up. Once it goes under that previous closing price, massive sell-off. Once it goes under that previous closing price, massive sell-off. Under the previous closing price, massive sell-off. So just pay attention, man, because if you see the SPY, Go under and turn that 382.44 into resistance. It's going to be a nice play for puts. And then once it goes under 381.50, it will likely snap 379, right? So I'm going to pay close attention to it. I'm already seeing the patterns lining up. 
Um, it's truly make or break. It's going to be interesting. So I'm going to leave it off at that. If you if you guys do want to be a part of Trader Society, the opportunity to join that is now. I'm going to leave the link down below. It's the first link in the description. This is the lowest it'll ever be priced at from here. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. I will see you tomorrow in the morning.